Now, I would like to introduce our first two speakers. This is going to be a tech chat. Uh, and this is a one-on-one -on -one kind of casual conversational kind of um, Q&A uh, with Christian Face of Linden, Linden Vest. Uh, we've invited Christian here because he has made some news recently with China Investment. So we want to hear all about how that China Investment came about and what you're going to do with all that capital that you've raised. And interviewing him is, is Cohen. Um, from London and Partners. And uh, so please come up, Christian and Cohen. Which is starting to get to work. Here we go. All right. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. And thank you, Rebecca, for hosting this um, event and not trying to pronounce my last name, I think, is always a good idea. Um, <laughs> um, for you who don't know me, my name is uh, Kuhn. I work at London & Partners. And um, London & Partners is the official uh, promotional and economic development organization for London. We're funded by the, the mayor's office and a number of private partners to help promote London around the world. Um, and I work with Chinese uh, companies and investors. Um, and it's really great to have Christian here uh, with us today uh, because I think we can... Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. I look... Even more, okay, even more. To, to, to the, that way. So that way. PowerPoint. Right, okay. So do I look more beautiful in this light? Thank you. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> cool. Um, so, but we're really honored um, to have Christian here with us uh, because uh, it's one of the major success stories, really, of Chinese investment uh, into London. But before we get on to that, Christian, do you want to have give us a bit of an introduction about um, who's Lend Invest and what you guys do and how did you come up with the idea? Yeah, absolutely. Well, good evening, everyone, and, and thank you very much for, for having me along this evening. Um, so Lend Invest uh, essentially is and we're an online mortgage lender, um, but we're a peer-to-peer -peer platform as well. So we're one of the big four peer-to-peer -peer platforms in the UK. Um, in terms of where the idea for our business came from, I guess um, we set up as an offline, very plain vanilla, um, pretty unexciting business actually in late 2008 um, as a short-term mortgage lending business. And um, as we sort of, as our business grew and we started to um, to look at different ways to raise money, actually, essentially for, for our lending capital. And we started to sort of see what was happening in the peer-to-peer -peer space, um, particularly in the US with a business called Lending Club, um, but here in the UK with Funding Circle um, and, and Zopa, which is, you know, peer-to-peer -peer really was invented here in the UK. Um, and so we decided to sort of take our business online, effectively. Um, and in the process of doing that, we really saw how offline um, and outdated the UK mortgage market is. So, you know, anyone who's gone through the process, the average mortgage in the UK takes three months to get. Um, it's an extremely poor consumer experience, um, filling out paperwork and doing all things like that. So, um, as we became more familiar with the mortgage market, started to embrace technology and, uh, and found ourselves where we are now, sort of uh, a sort of rapidly growing uh, tech business and the you know, capitalizing on, on the tech, uh, the sort of the hype around fintech at the moment. And, um, and so at what point did you decide that you needed to raise more funding? Well, we, we actually had self-funded the business since we set it up in 2008. And um, as I said, originally it was a pretty unexciting business, so certainly venture capitalists and those sorts of groups wouldn't be particularly interested in hearing from us. Um, when we took it online, it was in 2013, uh, we'd been working on the tech for a while, but I guess that was when we started to become perhaps a business that a VC might be interested in. We started to look, or we started to talk with VCs, you know, throughout Europe and in the US and, and all over the place. And I guess we felt that as a business, we knew the lending because we were, we were an offline lender. We'd been doing it for a number of years. Um, but the technology side for us was something that wasn't particularly strong. Um, so, but we're always, we're always happy to say, you know, we're happy to be a lender learning the technology than a technology business learning how to lend. Um, so we thought we had the combination right. 
Um, and a lot of the VCs that we met, uh, we, we just became quite sceptical, actually, with the VC space. Um, I think it's a very broad generalization, but a lot of the VC outfits that we spoke with didn't necessarily have partners that had necessarily built businesses themselves. Um, and so, and, and didn't sort of come from lending backgrounds or necessarily deep technology backgrounds. So we just sort of didn't really find the best fit for us. Um, and the business at, at this stage, you know, for the last sort of three or four years has been a profitable business, been self-funding, a pretty rapid growth. So we didn't really feel the urgent need to, to go and raise capital. Um, but then last year, <laughs> just it's a changed. Yeah, uh, yeah a, f a few days before London Technology Week, before we had a, a big Chinese delegation come over, and and um, they were very uh, happy and surprised to see the news. Yes, um, you got an investment from from Beijing Kunlun, and um, how on earth did you get to meet with them, and and where did that come from? To be honest, we didn't plan it. Um, we, it was probably sort of at the start of last year, we again picked up the idea of maybe raising some capital to put together the pitch deck and the sort of usual material. Um, and then by chance, um, someone from CICC uh, reached out to me and said they had someone visiting London. Um, at the time, I didn't know who CICC was um, and uh, certainly hadn't heard of the person they were saying was visiting London. Um, but it was intriguing enough to, to take the meeting. And so um, Mr. Zhou, who's the sort of chairman and founder of, of Beijing Kunlun, um, again, didn't really appreciate who he was. He came and visited us, um, but very quickly it became, just in that first meeting, very clear that he was extremely knowledgeable of our space, like super surprisingly knowledgeable, actually, scarily um, knowledgeable about peer-to-peer -peer and technology and all this sort of stuff. And it sort of knocked us off our chairs a little bit because we've been meeting with VCs and sort of, I guess, potentially outfits that weren't necessarily impressing us. Um, and, you know, we were, he wasn't trying to sell us, he was just sort of, we were just having a chat. But um, I think we, we struck it off pretty quickly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, it's not surprising that um, you meet with an investor, potential investor from China or a potential partner from China, and then you, you're quite surprised that um, how knowledgeable they are about, about, about fintech and about innovation and things. And I think there's still quite, quite a lot of maybe um, um, people don't really know how, how far China has come really in tech. And I think it's probably one of the things that we're trying to accomplish tonight, uh, getting a lot, a lot more people excited about tech in China and, and working with, with technology businesses in China. Yeah, I think that's right. And also, I think from one of the things that surprised us, probably, you know, showing our naivety, but was just how global the outlook was as well. So, um, you know, this is a company we've never heard of, but they've heard of every single player in our space and you had, you know, very deep knowledge of, of our market. Um, so, yeah, that, that w we found that really, really surprising. Yeah, and obviously they've gone on and made other investments in Grinder, for example, which is <laughs> <laughs> surprising to some. But <laughs> yeah. let's I, let's I never thought I'd read uh, the um, Lend Invest in the same sentence as Grinder in uh, the Wall Street <laughs> Journal, but I did. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes dreams come true. Um, <laughs> so, how did the negotiations uh, go with Quinlan with uh, on, on on the investment side? Was, was that something that was um, easy to 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 deal with because you've got different business cultures, different languages coming yeah. into play? Um, I don't think it was easy, but I don't think that was necessarily as a result of sort of cultural friction. I mean, th there was that in the sense of, um, you know, I don't speak Chinese. I think the transaction would have been a lot easier if I did. Um, the people at Beijing could learn speak a lot better English than my Chinese, so it's sort of all done in English. Um, and so so that that's a, that's a bit of a barrier, but... Um, the other thing is I think for us as a company that perhaps didn't have a VC investor on board, our company probably wasn't as investor ready as we may have thought it was. Um, so I think you know, for anyone that's interested, I think going through that process is a really, really useful one because actually you know, we had you know, just getting every, all the corporate documentation in order and sort of getting yourself set up in, in a sort of much more professional way uh, by bringing on an outside investor. So, um, and then you've got time differences and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm on WeChat now and you can sort of, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing <laughs> how you can get hold of people at pretty much any time uh, around the clock. So, yeah, no, it, w it was, a, it was, a, it was a, a, a tough process, but one that we are better for and, and very thankful to have done. Yes, and so in the end, it, it all went smooth. And, and what's, what's kind of been the, the biggest um, 
surprise that you've had since? Is, is, has, has it gone very well? Are there any challenges that you're still facing after the, um, after the investment? Or? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think um, we, it's a massive investment for us. You know, we raised 22 million pounds. It's sort of a game-changing event for us and our business. We've gone, you know, we're sort of rapidly growing our team and got new offices and all the rest of it. But for them, you know, they've, they're a company of a market cap of 5 billion. Um, and so we're a pretty small investment. And so, um, you know, perhaps we're not the most exciting news to them every single day, uh, which is fair enough. Um, you know, buying Grinder and things like that seems to be more exciting to them. Um, and, and, you know, they've gone on to do some, actually, they do a really big transaction now. So um, that hasn't been a surprise. I think we recently went to Beijing and got a tour of, so he's now heavily invested in other peer-to-peer -peer businesses in the scene there. Um, so we've got a, a really amazing access to other businesses um, that are going uh, just amazingly strong in China. It was just so eye-opening to see the growth there. I mean, we thought we were a successful business till we um, till we met some of their businesses. But um, yeah, so I think it's it's generally been a been a, a great experience. Yeah. And so on top of the capital, have they provided any any, any other support as a good investor? Yeah. Should? So for us, it's it's. It was a perfect match in terms of the technology side of things. So um, the, the principal, you know, Mr. Zhou, uh, a founder of a very rapid growing tech business, deep tech knowledge, um, just in terms of how to structure a tech team, how to sort of go about hiring the right people. Um, again, it's not stuff that perhaps we couldn't have found out elsewhere, but, you know, having someone who's a director on your board and sort of, you know, obviously deeply invested financially in terms of the outcome. So, so that's been, yeah, really useful. It's early days, but I think, yeah, it's, it's been great. So, so if there's any companies here that, that are currently in talks or looking to get investment, would you recommend getting investment from a Chinese Absolutely. VC or corporate? Yeah. And any advice? Um, any advice? Um, no, just do it. I mean, I think um, uh, for us, we were probably more wary of the cultural tension before going into the transaction, where now I think that's, that's not something to be concerned of or a reason not to sort of engage or to try and do a transaction like we did. So I think um, in hindsight, we, if we didn't go in with that mindset, it may have actually been an even smooth, smoother transaction. So. Okay, cool, very nice. Do we have time for questions? So how did you sort of get engaged? And can you give us a sort of a, a process map of how one would go about that if you were slightly shy or slightly novice in that requirement. <laughs> I'm not speaking of myself. You don't look shy. But yeah. I'm, uh, no, I'm not speaking about my, but we know about companies who may be. Yeah, I, so for us, uh, almost embarrassed to say as to how it came about, but in, uh, it's a good story in the sense, um, it was a LinkedIn message <laughs> from the banker at CICC. Wow. Um, and um, so I guess, yeah, and then so the roadmap from that, there were a bunch of meetings, impressive timeline, it all happened quite quickly, so. I think once once a principal is on board of a business, then you know the lawyers are just told to document it. Really, <laughs> sorry if there's any lawyers here. Okay, well, uh, very good, and uh, thank you, Cohen, and thank you, Christian. I uh, really appreciate that we uh, uh, staying around for further questions. So.